This is Beer in Front, part of the Odd Pods Media Network. Sometimes the beer in front of you is the best one yet. I'll talk about some old school beers that maybe you've forgotten about, some new beers that have the potential to be a classic. I'll also talk to various people around the beer world and get their stories all about beer. That's Beer in Front, and it's coming up now. Welcome to episode 196 of Beer in Front. I'm your host, Dave Zalatoris, and Beer in Front is a proud Odd Pods Media Network member. On today's show, I talk to Carmine and Thomas from the Rock Solid Brewing Company. They're located in Ball Ground, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta. Good time talking to those gentlemen. I was going to have a beer from Rock Solid, but the shipping company damaged the box, so unfortunately, I'm not able to have one, but I'm sure I'll get one down the road, and I'll have it on a later episode, but everything about that brewery looks great, sounds great, so stay tuned for that. As you know, I took last week off, had some family matters to attend to in San Diego, So I'm back better than ever. Shows will be out on a more regular basis now. I did pick up one beer in San Diego from Harland Brewing Company. I'll have that a little later on in the show. On next week's show, I'm going to have some kombucha. So I'm going to have a different fermented beverage. So look out for that. That'll come out next Monday. So stay tuned for that. If you'd like to support the show... Head over to patreon.com slash beer in front for more details. You could find out how you could support the show for as little as $1 a month. All right, enough of me rambling. Let's get on with the show. The latest on my back. So my back's been out since August. And going to the doctor, I've had epidural injections, going through physical therapy, doing everything. I'm supposed to continue with physical therapy and get this thing called dry needling done. I get a phone call on Monday from my physical therapist saying that it hasn't been approved from workman's comp and she doesn't want me to get billed for sessions that aren't approved, which I appreciate. So I contact my attorney, and he gets back to me, and the clowns at Workman's Comp say that I've had enough physical therapy, and they're not going to approve anymore. So you're now just going to have me sit here and stay in pain. So I don't know, my attorney's working on the problem. I have a follow-up visit for the doc with the doctor in a couple of weeks, and we'll go from there and Hopefully they could appeal this and authorize more stuff for me because it hurts. It hurts to sit. It hurts to stand. It hurts to walk. It hurts to sleep. So I'm constantly moving around just trying to get in that comfortable spot where I could like do something for more than a few minutes without like feeling it in my back. So hopefully that will be resolved soon. I mentioned in the intro that on next week's show, I'm talking kombucha. But in two weeks, it's my fourth anniversary. So I'll have to come up with something for the fourth anniversary show. I don't know what it's going to be because it's been a little hectic here the last few weeks. But I'll come up with something for the fourth anniversary. I don't know. I timed this wrong with my episode. So this is episode 196. I should have worked it out where the fourth anniversary show and episode 200 was the same. So maybe I'll do something kind of in the middle. Episode 199 or whatever will be the combination celebration. But I'll have something on tap in a couple weeks for both of those milestones for beer in front. And I thank you for listening. Whether you've listened to one show or this is your 196th, And probably the only three people that have listened to all 
195 up to now has been Joe, Dan, and Ray Ray. Maybe Ruby. Ruby, I think, has skipped an episode or two. But Joe, Dan, and Ray Ray have listened to all, and I appreciate you, and I appreciate everyone who's listened to Beer in Front and has put up with me rambling for almost four years now. I'm Richie, a.k.a. Midnight Agent Raw. I'm Devin, a.k.a. Special Delivery Dev. We're the Super Media Bros Podcast. And each week, we give a comedically informative take on movies, music, television, pro wrestling, and much more. Check us out at SuperMediaBrosPodcast.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere else that you can listen to podcasts. Shades on. We're off. Be sure to catch the latest from Super Media Bros wherever you listen to podcasts. Hello, friends. This is an AI version of John. Lauren has the power to make me say anything she wants me to say. She decided that I needed to tell you to listen to the Beard Al podcast. It's the podcast where we talk about two of the best things in the world, beer and the wonderful Weird Al. She also wants me to tell you that she rules and I drool. Lauren is awesome. I smell like feet. Go listen to the Beard Al podcast, available wherever you get podcasts. Lauren is the best at running the show. I'm just side talent. Lauren is so great. Rock Solid Brewing Company just celebrated their third anniversary in December. They are located in Ball Ground, Georgia, which is about a 45-minute drive north of Atlanta. Joining me now is founder Carmine Parisi and head brewer Thomas Muse. Gentlemen, thanks for taking time out today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Carmine, I'm going to start with you. Why a brewery? We are three owners, three partners, and uh, we we started, to be honest, like a, a sidekick in Southern Garage. <laughs> okay. Just have nothing to do weekends, you know, Sunday here in Georgia in the winter. Sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's weird. So, you know, when people get together, sometimes things happen and, yeah. you know, year after year, uh, that's what happened. And right, it's just now you came from Italy, and we were talking before. <laughs> yes, tell me a little bit about your background. So I was born in Italy, and I was born in Naples, South. And uh, I work in you know when I was in the middle school, high school, I worked with my uncle restaurants. Then I graduated from high school, culinary school, and then after that, I went to the army, joined the army. Okay. For uh, um, I was in Kosovo. Okay. The war went up in Kosovo. <laughs> I was in the paratrooper. And <laughs> after that, we went in uh, Iraq just after 9 11. <laughs> it was February 27, 2002. And I stayed there for eight months. And then I was done with the army. Okay. And then I went to live in Florence. So after that, I stayed two more years in Florence and I met my wife. And okay. I came to the United States on October. Okay, cool. Here. So we stayed in New York. Uh, my wife is from New York. So we stayed in New York until 2013. And then we moved in Georgia that year. And uh, we start to play around with beers. In reality, it was more around 2017. All right. You know, just to play yeah. around, sip, you know, feel, just create something weird. But yeah. And then after that, we, we decided to open a brewery, you know, in Ball Ground, Georgia. Cool. Thomas, I was looking at the website, and you have a wide variety of styles on tap there. How did you get your start in beer? So I got my start in beer when I realized that uh, I just wasn't made for a 9-to-5 office job. So when I graduated from college uh, with a bachelor's degree, uh, I, was on the, I was on the nonprofit uh, track. I was working, uh, doing AmeriCorps for a couple of years, had a... Uh, had a project that I was like, a, you know, essentially the the overseer of. And I just, I, I didn't like it. Um, I, I just kind of felt like a, you know, like a pencil jockey um, it- and just, you know, kind of answering emails. And it just never really felt like any, like what I was doing, like really ultimately mattered. And then uh, my grant funding ran out uh-huh. and I found myself in a position where it was like, oh, what do I do? And then it was like, oh, I can do anything. Like it was kind of like, you know, the the world was kind of opened up to me again. So I spent some time uh, just kind of bouncing around, uh, working service industry jobs, uh, working in kitchens, 
um, you know, working, you know, bartending, things like that. I uh, got a job at a brew pub in Madison, Wisconsin as a uh, bartender server. And while I was there, I somehow convinced the owner, a guy named Nate, I said, uh, hey, I think I want to do this brewing thing for a living. Um, you know, if you ever need any help with anything, you know, you, you need somebody to unload grain or, you know, clean floors or whatever, like I'm your guy. And he said, uh, he said, you know, let me uh, let me take some time, kind of figure out how all this works for myself. And then, you know, we'll, we'll see. So a couple months later, uh, he gives me a call. He says, uh, hey, I'm doing some work back in the brewery if you're interested. And I was there about 20 minutes later and he uh, he was like, okay, this is how you clean a tank. This is, these are the parts you need. This is how you hook everything up. And then it started from there. And uh, shortly after that, I became his assistant and I was there for nine months. And uh, after that, found my way in Baltimore, uh, okay. working at Heavy Seas Brewing out in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, did that for a couple of years and then uh, relocated to Georgia to work at Tucker Brewing in Tucker, Georgia. And then uh, I took the job here after that. All right. So I've just kind of been, you know, plying my trade ever since. I mean, I don't want to tell you how to do your job, Thomas, but how do you not have an Italian Pilsner on the lineup? <laughs> um, you know, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> right now, uh, the only the only good answer I have for that is we've only got four tanks uh, back right. in our brewing space, and <laughs> lagers being as popular as they are. Yeah. Um. You know, unfortunately, to to really do you know an Italian pilsner justice, it needs you know that that long like lagering fermenting time. Yeah, and uh, you know as as quickly as they're as they're drank here, it's just uh, it's it's hard to like give it the proper amount of time to yeah. really like make sure it, it gets what it needs. Do you have like what you would consider to be like a flagship beer there at Rock Solid? So you, we have a couple. Um, our two most popular beers. Uh, the first one is B is called Bee's Knees. All right. It's a uh, honey blonde ale, and that's far and away our best seller. And then the second best seller is uh, is called Linger Longer Lager, and that's kind of like a German like Helles style All lager. Right. And then after that, I mean, it really uh, any hazy IPA that we have on tap is kind of our our third best seller. So really, uh, light beers and IPAs are what our customers. Uh, really like to drink here. Yeah, it's. I'm assuming it's the same everywhere, but like here, it seems like the hazy IPAs that keeps the lights on for most breweries. Yeah, I, I mean, our hazy IPAs compared to like other styles that we do, whether it's like West Coast or doubles or cold IPAs, whatever you know, what have you. I mean, hazies outsell those two or three to one. Yeah, Carmine, what can people expect when they go to the tap room at Rock Solid? Uh, quality, first, all right. First thing, and we have a great uh, selection of beer. Mm -hmm. We go for dark beer to heavy beer to light beer to mm -hmm. honey blonde ale to hazy IPA, lager. We have a, a big variety of beer. We have ten taps. Okay, and uh, our tap room members, they are really great to uh, say they're knowledgeable. Uh, yeah, it's it's it's, it's a big. Every time we have a client, it's always like a big deal for us to add them. It looked like really cool, and you have like events like game night and yeah. other stuff like that. That's correct. We have a game night like uh, today. We have a Thursday. We have a bingo. Yeah. Wednesday we have trivia. Tuesday we have a, a cornhole, and then once a month, every Wednesday, the third Wednesday of the month, for every month we have a a, a comedy, and then every Saturday we have a music, and okay. then Sunday we have a some kind of charity event just to help bowl ground, you know. Oh, okay, cool. Yep. Now, Absolutely. with your background in food, do you have a restaurant there or food trucks? No, I love food, but we don't have any food on, okay. the, on the facility. But we have a, a, a lot of food trucks coming okay. in now. You know, we, we, we like to give our client a variety of different kind of food. Okay. You know, from tacos to German to barbecue to japanese to fish mm -hmm. you know so it's like i like to have a variety for a client do you ever see yourself like down the road introducing a kitchen or are you just happy with the way it is now with the food trucks i'm happy the way it is now. okay yeah maybe if maybe one day for a second location maybe okay but right now we could yeah all right cool now i was looking on the website and you know i saw that you just had your third anniversary you released a stout 
that was barrel age for three years. You were playing a long <laughs> game right from the start. How did that three year beer turn out? Um, I mean, the three year beer turned out really, I mean, it was really awesome. Okay. Um, deeply, you know, deeply complex. Um, mm -hmm. There was a lot of, I mean, you got a lot of character like from the barrel itself that came through. You know, you really tasted the, the oak and the char. And then in addition to that, you know, it had a really deep kind of like stone fruit, like raisiny notes, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of that dark chocolate and even like there was a, a, a slight element of like a uh yeah you know, like you burn the sugar on top of like a creme brulee yeah. there's kind of like a little um, bit of like a burnt sugar oh, wow. element to it as well and so it was like it really kind of all melded together into this like really really like deeply complex like but at the same time like really really drinkable stout did you have a lot of that or was that just like a one-off just for no, just the a, just room. a one barrel. Um, okay, just one barrel of it. So really, uh, with our barrel aging program that we have here, because our system is only a seven barrel system, uh, typically what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll find a fresh barrel from like a local supplier, mm -hmm. and then we'll really only fill like one barrel at a time. And right. really, that kind of just allows us to maintain uh, you know a pretty nice variety of things. So. Like right now, uh, actually just this past week, uh, we filled a maple barrel with uh, some Baltic Porter that oh, we made. Oh, wow. And then uh, coming up here really soon, um, there's a local distillery to Atlanta called ASW that makes really, really good stuff. I'm a big fan of, of their program that they have there. But they recently did uh, an Irish whiskey. And um, in years past, we've done uh, a beer called Dolores Dream, which is a dry Irish stout. Uh, this year, we're going to switch it up a little bit, and we're going to do an Irish red instead of an Irish uh, stout for St. Patrick's Day. Oh, perfect. Uh, but we got one of those barrels, uh, one of those Irish whiskey barrels, and then mm -hmm. when we, uh, when the Irish red is ready, then we're going to fill that barrel with uh, Irish red. So Irish whiskey, Irish red, really kind of just kind of like compounding those, uh, those elements together, which I think will make something, you know, really fun. All right. Yeah, that sounds really good. Like, I know, I'm just trying to think, because I usually, when I make my corned beef for St. Patrick's Day, I always use an Irish red. I don't know about uh, Irish whiskey aged Irish red, but it's a thought. I mean, it, it can't hurt to try it, right? No. I mean, who knows? It, it, might, uh, it might become a new favorite. Yeah. Carmine, when we were emailing uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago, you said that you have a beer coming up that's barrel aged in a Maker's Mark barrel? Yes, in February. I think February second, correct? We're gonna release yep. a new barrel aged stout. Okay. I mean, that sounds really good. I don't see here many beers, if any, that are like barrel aged in Maker's Mark barrels. How did that come about? Well, we have a friend, so it's part what? of Atlanta Bourbon Society. Oh, okay. So, currently, we are the first people to get what they have it. Oh, awesome. So we we try always to get the best barrel, you know. Yeah, no, yeah. that sounds really good. Yeah, and it's like you know, kudos to you guys because yeah, you never see makers yeah, like you're always yeah. finding like here in Chicago, you know, you get a lot of Booker's and you get a lot of Blanton's bottles and other ones, but I've never seen makers mark. So yeah, big kudos to you guys for that. That's coming out next week. I'm sure you've been sampling it along the way. How's it tasting so far? It's really nice. Um, it has a it has a very distinct um, a very distinct like sorghum note to it, uh, right. which I found really interesting. I wasn't uh, I wasn't quite expecting that uh, when we were tasting it, but uh, it started out in life as a um, as a, a beer called Happy Camper, which is a, a smoked a smoked s'mores uh, stout that All we right. put into the Maker's Mark barrel. So it kind of really has that that really nice combination of like you still get like that element of smoke like specifically like in the aroma not so much in the flavor it's kind of like you know that element's kind of mellowed out over time and then with the maker's mark you know you're getting kind of that additional like you know sweetness to it as <laughs> well uh and it really all comes right. together in a way that just like you know is is gonna be a lot of fun oh yeah that sounds really good is there a style thomas that you haven't had a chance to brew yet that you're just chopping at the bits to try <laughs> Um, you know, I really, uh, since I've been here, I've had a chance to work a little bit with, uh, Kvikis, that, uh, Norwegian, that Norwegian farmhouse, uh, specifically the Hornetall strain of, uh, Kvikis. And 
we first used that uh, this past year when we did uh, the Pink Boots collaboration beer. We did kind of like a uh, kind of like a, a Belgian farmhouse style that we dry hopped. Okay. With the uh, with the Pink Boots blend of hops, and that was the first time that I had ever gotten a chance to use like the the Kvike strain, mm-hmm. and just like the the quick the combination of like that quick turnover time. And just that really, really like powerful, like aromatic, like, you know, fruit note that it gives beers is something that is just like really, it's really interesting to kind of like play with and like see what you can come up with, like in terms of a a recipe to kind of like work around with it. I also really want to try and do uh, some more kind of English style beers. I think, uh, I think English styles tend to be a bit overlooked at least, uh, at least like generally speaking, like with the American palette and, you know, specifically too, like with our water profile that we work with here, uh, we have a little bit of like a harder, like water (laughs) that we have to work with, which really lends itself to more like malt forward. Yeah. Kind of like that multi like complexity, which is, you know, when I hear multi complexity, the first thing I think of is like English style. Yeah. And so I, I think if we can really, you know, if we can really find an audience for that here, uh, you know, with our with our regular customers, I would I would really love to kind of explore like more of those like traditional like classic, you know, English styles. Yeah, I mean, I wish like here, I wish more people would do something like a mild or another like a traditional English. Oh style. yeah, no, like I, the mild, I hundred percent agree. Yeah. yeah. I just think there's only a few of us to drink them. So yeah, I wish more people would appreciate it. That yeah, you could have a couple of these, not get messed up. It's just a solid, easy drinking everyday beer. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Now this was for both of you, and I know, like Carmine, we talked a little bit before, <laughs> but was there a beer, or in your case, Carmine, like a wine or whiskey? Well, what was it that you had? in your early years that made you really decide you want to get into beer or the beverage industry? Well, being from Italy, I love wine. I mm-hmm. really love wine. It's like uh, wine from Tuscany, Montepulciano, <laughs> Ganti. It's one of the, I think it's one of the best wine. Yeah. And uh, when I came to the United States, I started to, especially in the South, I started to taste uh, bourbon mm-hmm. and I really like it. Like, but see, my style of beer, it's very dark beer, stout, porter, or hazy IPA, but very like a rich, like heavy yeah. beer. Okay. Because of the background. Mm-hmm. You know? and that's, that's, that's what I like. I like, I, I like beer. I drink beer, but they need to be heavy. Okay. Because I like, I love barrel aged stout and the yeah. program that we have, it's, it's amazing. And wow. it's something else. Cool. Thomas, yeah. what about you? So I, Personally, I'm a big fan of, uh, I, I really just like light beers. I like light lagers. Um, I like something that, you know, you can crack open a can of in the middle of the afternoon and, you know, just especially like on a nice day, like there's, there's nothing better than like sitting out in the sunshine, you crack open a a Kolsch or a, or a light lager (laughs) and just kind of, you know, like see where the day takes you. As far as like the type of beer that really kind of got me to like, be a fan of craft beer in general. Uh, really, it started when I graduated from college and I moved to Wisconsin. And when I was in Wisconsin, I was introduced to you know New Glarus, which is of yeah. course the kind of the the granddaddy of yeah. of all uh, of all Wisconsin beer. And you know, drinking at the time uh, when I had tried Spotted Cow for the first time, and, and Spotted Cow really kind of comes with its own like you know legendary status, mm-hmm. right? And I remember at the time kind of thinking to myself, like, why do people love this so much? Like, I don't really get it. It just kind of feels like very basic, like Mm -hmm. on its, on its surface. And to be honest, I still kind of believe that the other stuff that Duglaris makes is better. Oh yeah. I agree. I think that girl is great. Mm -hmm. Two women is great. Uh, Moon man Man, is, is one of my favorites. But since I've been away from Wisconsin, like I've, I've grown to, appreciate spotted cow like especially from like a cultural standpoint and kind of like the the sort of gravity that it has like on the brewing community in wisconsin uh i've learned to appreciate that more like as time has gone on but yeah that's that's really kind of where where i got my start with being a fan of craft beer and it's another question for both of you what inspires you 
outside of the brewery? What is your passions or what are your passions? And how does that make your jobs better at the brewery itself? I love people. Okay. I love, we've, you know, been in the industry for more than 20 years now. Mm -hmm. It's, I love dealing with people. Mm -hmm. I like to create an atmosphere where people, they feel comfortable, they feel welcome, and they feel appreciated. Mm -hmm. That's that's a great thing for me. Yeah. And that's why we always try to turn the tap. Especially we have a great beer, but I want to have people to have a great time. And we and we always train our beer tender to work with clients properly. Oh, okay. Know? The reality is we don't know what kind of state mind they come inside the brewery. Mm -hmm. But we want to make it sure that when they leave, they leave in a great settlement. They leave happy, satisfied. They leave that somebody cares about them. Yeah. And we're there for them. So that's that's my everything. Yeah. And after a couple of beers, everybody's feeling happy when they leave. Thomas? For me, I mean, uh, really travel for me is is one of my, you know, one of my passions outside of, you know, working in the brewery. And, and even... Um, and even while I'm traveling, whether it's domestically or whether it's internationally, um, I still very much enjoy uh, going to other breweries, going to beer bars, going to, uh, you know, just well-renowned like drinking establishments and, you know, meeting the people that are there, seeing what people are drinking and really kind of like taking taking those things that I see and those things that I, that I taste and I experience and trying to find a way to, you know, work that into what we do here at rock solid do you have anything coming up down the road like any new i mean we talked about the maker's mark uh, barrel age beer you got coming up but are there any other like new beers that you're working on like coming out for the spring yeah. and summer anything you want people to know about yeah so uh right now it's actually it's actually in our bright tank right wow. now uh we did a baltic porter that uh that i'm really excited for it to hit our tap lines i think it I think it turned out really nice. It has a super clean, like, you know, non roasty, like profile to it. Uh, I'm really excited for people to try that one. Uh, it's the same one that we put into a maple barrel a little mm -hmm. bit ago as well. Other than that, uh, we're kind of, I'm in the process of developing a couple of recipes. Uh, I'm working on a Weizenbach recipe. I'm working on um, kind of a, a rye based, like amber ale as oh, well. Okay. Uh, we got a couple of a couple of collabs, you know, with other breweries like in and around Atlanta, kind of in the works as well. Uh, right now, I'm talking to uh, Andrew over at Steady Hand Brewing, which is in uh, kind of West Midtown, Blandtown in uh, Atlanta, and uh, we're gonna do kind of like a breakfast, like oat brown ale. So I'm pretty excited for that brew day, yeah. and um, you know, really the 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 focus the focus for me and and what we're trying to do here in this year is really to just kind of like, you know, kind of hone in on the things that we know that we do well. Indeed. And, you know, my my biggest thing is I tend to be the kind of person where I start with like, I start with one thing or I start with one idea, but yeah. then I'm never really like willing to just kind of like move on to the next thing right away. <laughs> I kind of want to figure out, it's like, okay, that turned out pretty good, but like, what can I do to make it like a little bit better? And so- yeah. I've kind of taken like a couple of the recipes that uh, you know that we've developed since I've been here. Uh, the Kolsch being kind of the first thing that comes to mind, where it's like, all right, every every subsequent batch of Kolsch that I've done, there's always been some sort of like tweak to it, some sort of like whether I'm changing like one of the specialty malts we use, whether I'm playing around with the water chemistry, yeah, just any number of things, because it's like at the end of the day, it's like I'm just trying to make like everything we do like just little yeah. bit better than what we did the first time have you hit the nail on the head on the first try ever um i guess the the argument for that would be uh midnight trucker which right. uh <laughs> which which took home the uh the gold medal at uh gabf this past year oh awesome cool uh in the uh, international dark lager category mm -hmm. uh which is something that one i mean obviously never expected that it would go as far as it did i mean my really the the biggest goal submitting especially to like those big competitions is like i'm really just like looking at the feedback sheets that i get yeah because i really want to see like what people who are experts like in the you know sensory profile mm -hmm. beers like what do they think 
of like the things that I am submitting to them. And so when I submitted Midnight Trucker amongst, you know, a couple of other things that we sent, um, I, I never would have dreamed that it would have, you know, won a gold medal. And I remember somebody had asked me that question before, like, you know, how many, how many iterations of that recipe, like, did you do? And, uh, well, it was the first one. <laughs> it was the first time that we had ever, that we had ever made that beer. And so it really kind of, it felt like capturing like lightning in a bottle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and so it's something that, you know, obviously I'm, I'm super proud of. It's something that, you know, we've, uh, we've made another batch of it since then. And mm -hmm. I mean, I might be a little biased, but yeah. I think this second batch is even better than the first one. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's kind of another one of those things where it's like, you know, yeah, the first one, yeah. One gold of GABF, yeah. like cool, but like, maybe it could even be better, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> do you guys is do you distribute around the Atlanta area or is it just pretty much tap room and crawlers? It's just uh it's just tap room. Okay. For us. Um and, and there's like there's good and bad. I mean, there's pros and cons with you know not being in distribution. Um what we've seen here specifically like in Georgia is that a lot of breweries have kind of been getting burned uh by distribution as far as like uh their distributors are coming to them and saying, Hey, we're cutting, you know, X amount of percentage of like what we normally order from you. And with the way that the laws have been written here for the last, you know, several years or so distribution was seen as sort of the primary like revenue generator. Mm -hmm. Um, so if a distributor comes to you one day and says, Hey, we're cutting what we order from you by 30, 40% or more than that. I mean, that's a, I mean, that could be you know, potentially a, a real killer for, yeah. for a brewery. And, you know, fortunately that's something that we don't have to worry about. I mean, then. we know that, you know, we're, we're making, you know, a, as much, as much as we can on our product, like just selling it at our front door. Okay. Do you like, do you can for consumers to take out or just growlers? We do. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. uh, so back in October of this last year, uh, we officially launched like our, you know, our canning, all right. here yeah all right cool well before i let you guys go one i want to thank you both for coming on i need to give a shout out to my cousin brian who brian <laughs> texted me about carmine and you know and carmine you could attest to this too i don't know what it is about italian people because my mother does it too <laughs> they when they're discussing somebody oh you'll like him he's italian like my mother could be talking about an axe murderer. He's okay. He's Italian. So Brian, thank you for setting this up. That's true. That's, That's yeah. true. That's and I'm funny. glad you're not an axe murderer, Carmine. So we're good. <laughs> I get. I get. Yeah. <laughs> well, gentlemen, thank you again. If you're in the greater Atlanta area, you need to check out Rock Solid Brewing Company. They're located at 345 Gilmer Ferry Road in the town of Ball Ground, Georgia quick 45 minute drive from atlanta no traffic in atlanta at all you'll be there in 45 <laughs> minutes so you guys got to check out rock solid hey Gentle listen you're driving against traffic if you're coming from atlanta so yeah. as long as there's not a wreck you'll be fine all right gentlemen thank you so much again it's been great meeting you great talking to both of you thank you for having us man all i right. appreciate it all right thank you thank all you all right Hey, the beer I'm going to have right now is from Harland Brewing Company. They're out of San Diego. This is a Japanese lager. This is 5% alcohol. They use Pilsner malt, puffed jasmine rice, and toasted rice flakes. So I had something before from Harland, and I really liked it. So I wanted to try this. We were there for family matters, so we didn't have a chance to hit a lot of spots, but... There was one grocery store I went to, and they had this in a single can, so I picked it up. So let's crack open the Japanese lager from Harland Brewing Company. Looks really good. It's nice and light. A lot of foam here. Smells very nice. I really like the aroma that I'm getting here. That's really good. Like, I'm trying to put my finger on the flavor profile that I'm getting, but it's very clean. That's just really good. It's like super refreshing, nice and light. I'm trying to, you know, because it says they use this, they use puffed jasmine rice. 
I'm trying to see if I get that jasmine rice feel to this. I'm not quite sure I do, but I'm going to have some more of this. But I think this is excellent. No, that's really, really good. I'm trying to remember what I had from Harlan before, maybe a year or so ago. But I remember liking that a lot. This one I do like. So if you're in the San Diego area or if you're in an area where you could pick up some Harlan Brewing, I would definitely try this Japanese lager. It's really good. Like here I picked it up in the stovepipe can, the 19-ounce can. So I'm assuming you could get this in, you know, like six packs or a four pack. But it's really good. It's refreshing. It's light. It's crisp. So if you're a fan of lagers, you want to try something a little different, I would pick up the Japanese lager from Harland Brewing. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this week's edition of Beer in Front. I thank you for listening. I thank Carmine and Parisi and Thomas Muse from Rock Solid Brewing Company for coming on, talking about their great brewery in Georgia. If you're in the Atlanta area, check them out at 345 Gilmer Ferry Road. They're in Ball Ground, Georgia. Quick drive from Atlanta, so check them out. I'll talk to you next week on Beer in Front, and remember, sometimes the beer in front of you is the best one yet. <laughs>